It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every Wednesday or so at the Ann Arbor District Library. Lovely, humid, traffic-congested downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Comics.aadl.org. And this is the show where we talk about making comics, uh, writing comics, drawing comics, the lifestyle of the cartoonist, all the stuff that goes into this medium that drives us all mad. My name is Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist. And I, I never announce myself this way as the host of the show, uh, I think it's an assumption. It's inferred uh, by the audience that I am, because I do try to lead the conversation. But this time, I'm even less of a host than normal, because I know I'm going to get railroaded by these two guests that we got on the show. First of all, we got returning to the show, Greg Schiegel, StuffSaidShow.com, PixComic.com. Hello, com. Jersey. I will never railroad you. I'm a caboose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a caboose! <laughs> <laughs> Ready, you're starting with me. Greg Schiegel of the Stuff Said Podcast, of the Stuff Said Show.com, also uh, of the upcoming book. Or is it out yet? No. It's not out yet. I'm getting my first copies next week. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, picks, PicksComic.com. Uh, teenager, superhero, fairy princess. Question mark on that last one. <laughs> what? We will talk about this on the show. Uh, but. People are going to be saying, who are listening to this after the fact, like, wait a minute, Greg was just on episode 100. Uh, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so good, you got to have him twice. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, but thanks for coming back to the other show. It's actually, I mean, for those who are listening to this way after the fact, we took a couple-month hiatus of doing the Comics Great Show, so it's been a while since we've done it, and uh, uh, this was my only opportunity to get my other guests on the show, so I had to bring it back. That is right, Connor... Our, our in-studio guest. Hello. Connor, I brought the show back for you. I was Thank on vacation. That's, how, that's the regard. That's the treasure of my regard that I'm giving to you today. Thank you. No, no pressure, Connor. <laughs> okay. No pressure. <laughs> Don't let me down. Hello. <laughs> so, Connor, you are a 13-year-old cartoonist? 12. You're 12. But 12. you can call me 13 if you'd like. I, I know you'd probably like that, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a little while yet. Makes me seem older and smarter. Mm -hmm. Mm, older doesn't necessarily mean smarter. Yes, it does. <laughs> no, does Connor, it? Connor, Probably. will you be 13 in the year 2014? No. Okay. See. You're 12. Yep, you're 12. Can so. I please be just 13, just for once? Nope. No, no, this, this makes it even better, because the title of this one is Kids vs. Adults. So okay, you, you, got, you, you are also, no pressure, you're representing all kids everywhere. Oh, God. Every kid. <laughs> Every kid. I'm not even popular with the kids at my school. This is a disaster. <laughs> 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 can we well, start? Well, can we start there by saying, like, Greg, are are cartoonists, young cartoonists, ever popular with the other kids at school? Depends what you were drawing, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that was the intention. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so Connor, just let's give a backstory on you. Uh, we've known each other for a couple years now. Um. Yeah, a little over a year, I'd say. We we, we met at a uh, comic convention, yeah. and you were participating in some of my workshops that I was leading at the Detroit Fan Fair. Right. And then you wound up taking a couple of my comics classes. And uh, I'm going to pay you a compliment. Don't let this go to your head, and don't okay. get too unduly embarrassed. Okay. Uh, you're a pretty smart kid. Thank you. But what I think is really the mark of distinction about you is you do not flinch from a challenge. Like, in the comics classes that I taught, I would throw things at the class that some of the kids would be like what I gotta do this and you were always just like all right we're making things today and you never you, you were never afraid to work really hard to do interesting work and I think that is even cooler than being smart thank is you. is being courageous and putting a lot of effort and stuff but you make really cool comics thank you so we got young cartoonist old cartoonist and we're gonna have a discussion about kids versus adults well man, I should have pointed at me I, my hair is grayer than yours Greg we're uh, both the same age. We're yeah. both old. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're both not TV handsome anymore. Relatively speaking, we are old. Relative to a young Connor. There we go. Hi. Yeah. Um, I had on my list of things to actually bring up with you, Greg, and introducing you to the audience. Um, you're you're uh, you like donuts. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I like have as I call it, a righteous sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like one of the things that, so like I got to hang out with you at uh, the American Library Association conference uh, yep. and at Kids Read Comics this year which was you warned me that I was possibly going to get sick of you but I could not get enough <laughs> it was the best uh, uh, thank you highly, highly recommend hanging out with Greg but, uh, <laughs> but one of the things is like we get to Las Vegas and Greg's like alright so I tracked down these donut places this seems like the best one uh, 
do you have this is just a dumb little thing but tips for cartoonists who are traveling to go to different conventions what's your strategy for finding the best donuts in every town find the best donuts yeah like what do you what do you what do you do so to try, do you just like t type in donuts las vegas in google yeah. search seriously yeah. Yeah. And that's how you found that place, that pink, that, what was it called? Uh, uh, pink Box Donuts I found from that. And then, okay, so because I am so fond of donuts, I have friends that send me links to okay. 10 best donuts in the country, this, that, and the other. So I'll get these links from time to time, and I'll scan the list to see where I've been, where I haven't been, where I'm going. Okay. And I got one of these lists that had Pink Box on it. I'm like, well, I'll be in Vegas in like four months. There we go. Problem solved. How do you remember that, though? You don't have like, do you have like a, like a list? Like I an don't Everton? drink. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I just, I just wondered if there was a system because you always seem very knowledgeable about the food in whatever area that you're in. I do a little bit of research before I go. I check a few websites. Roadfood.com okay. is one of them. Uh, and just do general searches for whatever, like eater.com has different city uh, breakdowns. And sometimes I'll scan those. And then any, any city usually has a hometown newspaper slash website. So in New York, it might be like the Village Voice or something like that. So you sort of go to those because okay. that's usually locals. You, you track down the local school. foodie rags. I try. Sometimes I don't always get to it. I'm going to Maryland in a week and a half, and I haven't really done the, mm. the hard work on that. Well, I, I imagine there's some towns that don't have foodie rags, right? Like if you go to like – Northern Michigan. Have you been to Northern Michigan, yeah, Connor? I was just there this past weekend. I'm Not a sure. foodie paradise. Barely any restaurants. But yeah. <laughs> where they do have food, it's food. It's good. <laughs> there's, there's a commercial for the Department of uh, Available Tourism. Available now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they do have a lot of bears, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but, okay, so research, local foodie rags. All right, let's, let's get the topic because we got a limited yeah. amount of time. Um, comics. Comics. So, G Greg, did yeah. this book. Um, picks. I read the first chapter. It's really good. Oh, hey, thanks. Some for a, from, a, from, a, from the audience. Yes. And I, I am somebody who also makes comics for young people, um, or at least I try to. Uh, and one of the things that guys like me and Greg fall victim to in our discussions, Connor, uh, not between ourselves, but um, when we get into discussions amongst other grown-ups, is we think we know how kids think and, and what kids like because we were kids we remember what it was like to be a kid after all um but uh memory cannot always be the most reliable witness in this kind of thing so we wanted to get your input your um your approach you the way you think about stories what you like in stories and one of the things one of the reasons i asked you to even be a part of um the the show and kids read comics which we're going to show a clip of in a little bit um of all of the students that I've worked with, you would come to class with an idea book. Do you remember this? Yeah, I, I remember bringing that for the first, um, the first session of that. And, and I got really excited about it because I, I rarely see this happen with young people. And I wonder if you could explain what your idea book is. Well, what I just did was I, I found a bunch of my interests and I tried to find things that usually have a cartoonish or a good concept for a story that would be possible. And so then I would just kind of look at them and then see if I could come up with some arbitrary idea and hope it works. But like the stuff in there would be like, like just like a cutout of a print of um, the bad guy from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Well, come on. He's part cartoon. <laughs> I have to use that. <laughs> but like it would be like just weird nonsensical things like a soup can and like a shoe and like a car, like a cut cutout from a mad magazine. And it was just all pasted in there without any kind of note or demarcation whatsoever. Um, it was just... I, I just recognized it on site, I guess. I don't really know. So, okay, so it's, it's a gut reaction thing. Yeah. Like, you just, what, what, like, what, how do you, okay. Sorry. No, 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 no. This is me trying to find the way, right way to phrase the question. Is how, what is the thing that grabs you? Like, when you see something in, like, a Mad Magazine, or you see something, like, you see picture of Frame Roger Rabbit, Rabbit Bad Guy. What was the bad guy's name in that, anyway? Judge the, Doom? Yeah, Judge Doom. Um... What, 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 what grabs you and what doesn't? Like, how do you know the difference between, like, oh, that's something I got to put in the idea book, and that's, eh, that's nothing. Um, what, you, what he's trying to say, Jersey, is what's your thing? What's your thing? Yes. I, I understood what he meant the first time. But, um, <laughs> oh. ba basically, just something that, first of all, has jokes that aren't just the same lame pun repeated over and over. Something with, not like, um, 
Not like if you if you put a regular joke in one of your comics. Your comics are funny, but like if oh. they just keep making puns about fish for some reason, that's not funny. It's like repetitiveness. If it's, yeah, Isn't you have to kind of be unexpected, like a wide variety. That's what you, you Greg, pe- all sorts of people like you guys. What you guys do. So surprising you. Yeah. So it's, uh, what be unexpected. Just, be unexpected. So like for instance, like falling down uh, a drain pipe in the bathroom and finding a magic eight ball with tendrils. That could work, I guess. <laughs> See, you that's never chapter know. two. That's chapter two of picks. Cool. That's ex- <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. You, you got spoiled it, the whole the thing. <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't spoil anything I about the book, but, uh, but that does Connor, happen. Yeah. Question about what's yeah? your thing. Yeah. Do you have a favorite movie of all time? Yes. What is it? Back to the Future. Hey, that's mine. Yeah, I think we talked about that on the on the at the other thing. Yeah, we did. So now, what is it about that movie? Well, that um, gets you. Okay. Um, another thing that grabs me that grabbed me in Back to the Future is I kind of I like history a lot because they're usually stories that did happen or are very likely to have happened. So that's what grabbed me about Back to the Future. When? How old were you when you saw it for the first time? Pretty sure I was ten. All right, that's about when I saw because it, it came out in 85. I was 10. I yeah. love that movie. Still do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious if we, if now I've watched it again as a grown-up, I still love it. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there are things in that movie that I get now that I didn't get then. And I'm not sure because, as Jersey said, memory is unreliable. Yeah, so, there, are, there are probably several things okay. that you get now. I was going to say the Ronald Reagan joke, right? Ronald Reagan, the, the actor? actor? How's the next line go? Um, I, I forget who he meant. Who's Vice President? Jerry Lewis? I, I think he said Jack Benny. I don't know. Uh, I <laughs> Jack the, Benny. I forget the first lady, but I mean. Connor knows who Jack Benny is, folks. <laughs> I, I heard that when they, they screened that for, Rob, um, for, um, for Ronald Reagan, and when he saw, heard that joke, he left for a solid two minutes, then asked the projector guy to go back because nobody could hear anything else in those two minutes that he was laughing. <laughs> and then he just kept laughing. It, yeah. But, but like when I was a kid, I didn't know that Ronald Reagan was an actor when, when he was president, right? I, mean, I was only like nine or something like that when that movie came out. So. I still think the joke works, though, because everything you need is in the joke. Who's the president? Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones, the actor, instantly you know he was an actor in 1955. He's the president in 1985. It right. doesn't matter what the name is. The joke is there. You think so? Yeah. Like, okay. Who's the vice president? Another name I don't know who's probably an actor? <laughs> that, it's not as funny when you don't know who you're talking about. But... No, of course, but the, the, the mechanics of the joke are still there. Yeah. I'm thinking of things like, okay, so Marty goes back in time. And there's a whole relationship he has and doesn't have with his young mother. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. What's your take on all that, Connor? The, the um, Lorraine Calvin Klein scene well, dynamic. Um, what I notice is that um, that, that scene just kind of, I, I get it, the joke, because that's that just it creates some sort of paradox or something it'd be impossible if that ever worked out in any way but i mean it's funny nowadays um one thing i I just like about that joke that a lot of kids should be able to get if they remember um like at the beginning of the movie when they first present his mother she whines about how he's dating a girl and all this stuff and um one thing a lot of people don't notice, but some kids might if they're bored and they only saw the first and then like scene and then they come in later on, is that she mentions, I never sat in a parked car with a boy or <laughs> talked with a boy or that, then when they have the whole dance thing, um, it's like, can we stay in here and talk? Oh, yes, I've talked with lots of boys in parked cars. And th- that joke everybody gets. It, I don't know. It's, I think it's no, a that's, funny scene. That's a good point, which brings me to my next question. That <laughs> sequence in the car. Yes. From, from that point up through George stalking Biff in the face, what's your take on that sequence? It's, it, I, I just, 
I'm I'm sorry. I haven't seen the movie in a while, but I remember. All right. A so lot of this, Marty's in um, the car with with Lorraine, and she, I think she's falling. And he's ahead. waiting. He's waiting for George to show up because George is going to be like, "Get your hands off her." Yeah, and then Biff but, gets but in Biff shows up instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Right now, now thanks for refreshing my memory. You got it, um, buddy. I, I think that that scene it's actually it's less focused on the humor and a little more on dramatic because like that that stuff I wasn't expecting that and yeah, I'm sorry if I'm not very exciting to listen to. No, no, you're very exciting to listen to. Okay. <laughs> Because all I can hear I mean, is a monotone, like I'm on some public radio station. Yeah, Hello, uh, listeners. No, no, that's, that's, I'm just because I'm vale. that scene in particular is one that grown-ups talk about. And yeah. I, as a kid, just remember it being kind of a little scary, kind of a little intense, and like, oh, no, Marty's in trouble. Yeah. Now, and, I don't, and I don't know how an actual 12-year-old sees it, because I'm thinking of how I remember seeing it, and I don't trust myself. Okay. Um, what, what I kind of saw was... Is is it okay if I speak on a bit of a serious tone here in this part? Of course, we can okay. get as serious as you want to be. Okay, because it seems like um, Biff was assaulting her, mm-hmm. and I I probably shouldn't say the word that I'm thinking of because we know the word we know the word you're thinking. You know what of. I'm talking about, but yeah. Yeah. then luckily, um, luckily George came in and th- stopped all that. Yeah, that's pretty admirable of him to s- stop yeah. all that. I'm not even sure if he realized it. But yeah, yeah, I know, and that that's what makes that scene so much more of a relief, right? Because right. it was so scary. It's a very yeah. scary scene. And it, yeah. It, yeah, okay, so he got it. He got, no, I, that's great. I think it's great. It shows a, a maturity. Thank you. Because I don't know if I got it. I know it was scary because, yeah. but I think in my tiny little brain, I was just concerned that Marty was locked in a trunk. <laughs> And like, oh no, what's going to happen? Can George take Biff? George is such, you know, give me a milk chocolate. (laughs) So, okay, well, that that, that answers the question that the the kids do get it, right? Yeah. Um, And even though the scene is scary... It's not explicit, right? It's it's very suggested what's happening, but right. we don't see what's happening, right? Yeah. Um, but it's still scary, and it's and it's it's it, it upsets it's intense. you. Yeah, it's intense. Thank you for that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so okay, you know, we, we kind of skimmed over this. Uh, that was a really interesting place to go. But uh, <laughs> it, it, people listening uh, or watching are probably going like, Man, that that Greg and that Connor, they got a dynamic. Those two guys should do their own show together. It's like there's some sort of duo of dynamics. <laughs> Thank you for that transition. You're welcome. Because, yes, you guys did do an act together at Kids Read Comics this past year, uh, and we've got a clip. This video is going to drop on the Ann Arbor District li- uh, Library website very soon. It's almost done editing. But I'm you- so excited. Me too, uh, because you guys did an awesome job. You guys did uh, a panel at the show where it was sort of like uh, a talk show. Uh, and I think even Greg kicked that off by saying, like, do you know what a talk show is, Connor? And you're like, oh, you mean like David Letterman, Johnny Carson? And... I just, I think I listed all these guys and it was crazy. <laughs> which leads to the races. Which I've got a follow-up question after that about that very okay. thing. But first, I thought we should play this 10-second clip so people get a taste of what, the, why you guys need to have your own show together. Uh, Matt, do you have it queued up? <laughs> Quiet in the audience, please. Oh, no, no, you, you want them, you want them to react. You want them to be like, yeah, you the man. Should we, yeah. should we advertise for our booths here? We can do that. Okay. We're gonna do that in the plugs. All right. At the end, we'll plug all our stuff. Okay. Okay. Are we back, Matt? Okay. Yay. <laughs> That was a great clip. <laughs> I hope so. I don't remember any of it. Oh, I remember it perfectly. So you guys, Thank did, you, you guys did a talk show where you actually, you know, had guests on. And uh, what, what is what is the character called who sits next to the host on those shows, Greg? Uh, typically, it's a sidekick. Is it a sidekick? Yeah, Ed yeah. McMahon was Johnny Carson's sidekick. Okay. Uh, I guess Andy Richter maybe isn't referred to as a sidekick, but he essentially is. Okay. So you you were Greg's sidekick, yes. right? And, uh, no, no, he was my sidekick. Well, I think that's what you guys were. You guys were doing the whole. You're the dummy. No, you're the dummy. You're the dummy <laughs> routine a lot during that that panel. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the video when it drops at comics.aedl.org. But uh, we've got to have you guys both back at KRC next year to do that again. I uh, can't wait. Uh, but uh, but okay. So this leads me to and one of the things you guys talked about a lot on that show is 
Connor, you seem to have like this uh, supernatural knowledge of pop culture yes. way beyond your years, right? It's kind of terrifying. Like most kids your age, it's like I can ask them about Pokemon, I can ask them about SpongeBob, but I can't ask them about Samford and Son or, you know, Mannix or Hawaii Five O. but I can ask you stuff, ask you right. about that kind of stuff. So, okay. I don't know that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but I, that leads me to the question. Mannix. You, <laughs> I like cop shows. Adam 12. Okay. Right. Adam 12 is great. It's so good. Okay. Uh, uh, but where do you find this stuff, Connor? And, and how, what leads you to, let me separate this. What leads you to go searching out for this stuff? And then how do you find this stuff? To, 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 for somebody to go on so much fact finding for stuff that inspires them. That, that um, is unusual for somebody your age. Honestly, I'm I'm not really sure how I find most of this stuff. I mean, I read a lot of books called Uncle John's Bathroom Readers, which are available now at a local store near you. Anyways, they have like all sorts of random trivia and all about all sorts of stuff, and I just get on a tangent and start like typing it in and going on all sorts of website. Pretty soon, I could get like a PhD in this stuff or something. I'm not sure. So when you you, you find a subject that you're interested in, you just have to drill all the way down yeah, until you know all about. Yeah, I just like try to learn as much as I can. That's that's amazing. Thank you. Uh. Do you, do you do this at school? Well, it depends <laughs> on the topic. In math, I'm drawing. Uh, yeah. In science, I'm reading. Yeah. In every other class, I'm doing as much as I can. Greg, is that a problem? Uh, I'm if trying you, if to you're it. if you're incapable of doing two things at the same time, it could be a problem. Yeah. I can't do two things, so I'm. But I'm yeah, but if you can doodle and listen, sometimes that actually, in my experience, that that kind of helped because uh, something's happening in your brain where the doodling helps you remember what you were hearing. You it can almost look yeah. at the drawing and say, oh, that's what was happening in class. Does yeah. that happen Kinda to like you? That notes. happens to me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, that happens to me too. Like when I'm drawing, actually to this day, I'll be drawing a comics page and I can go back and look at it and like, oh, I was listening to this album when I was drawing yeah. that panel, which is weird. That is awesome. <laughs> I'm, whenever I listen to an album, it's just like, I remember sitting on the floor listening to this album. Oh, you actually like will just sit and listen uh, to the music? Well, yeah, but that's the right way to do it. The thing is, most of the albums I've ever heard, I was just sitting down or I was in the car just listening to it. Um, and then, like in the future, I don't remember, like, oh, I was reading about Christopher Columbus or I was solving world peace. I just remember I was sitting in the car reading a comic book. <laughs> that's a pretty awesome memory, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, it is, actually. Now, now, Connor, a question. Jersey brought up that he could talk to a kid about Pokemon or SpongeBob SquarePants. And I'm curious. In 2014, what what are 12 year olds into? Do do they like SpongeBob? Do they like like what's what's oh. the what's the jam right now? Okay, so I don't know much about normal people. I think they're quite adorable, but I don't know much about them. Yeah, from your observation of the normals. So, at least based on who I see at school, there are. Is it are... all Sam and Cat all the time? No, actually, it's not. That show okay. got canceled. My brother watches this stuff, so I know all about it. But um, the boys like. Swag. If you don't have swag, you are not normal. The girls. But swag. Swag is a way of life, right? It's not a. It's not a pop culture event. No, it's like anything that has anything to like the word swag on it, or has um like snapbacks or LeBrons or whatever these kids are into these days, <laughs> that it just has to have swag involved with it somehow. That, okay. That's what seems to be selling everywhere. Girls, I'm not so sure. A lot of them like themselves. Not <laughs> at least, not. I don't mean to sound like a jerk here. I'm sorry about that. I just mean the girls at my school who are, I'm not going to say narcissistic. I'm just going to say like themselves They have self-esteem. In more, not just like self-esteem, like, oh my gosh, I just got a pedicure. Look at me. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I offended you if you're listening to this girls at my school. The, the, I'm sure there are some nice girls too. There are some. I, I actually make more friends with girls than boys. Do you? Yeah. I found I, that I was the same way when I was your age. I got along with girls really well, uh, because mostly because I was uh, a skinny little thing who just wanted to draw instead of like tackle guys and right, wrestle guys. And... Actually, a lot of people I'm friends with, they have more friends with girls than boys. It's, it's kind of strange. Mm. Well, we're, we're, we're entering an age where the He-Man woman haters no longer exist, hopefully. <laughs> That's uh, little us... rascals. <laughs> Well, that's fair. Everyone should know the little rascal. Yes. That's right. It's a way of life. <laughs> that's great. Oh, I don't even have to prod you. Uh, okay, well, let's let's go here. This is a question Greg actually pitched to me in email, 
which I thought was a really insightful way to go about this thing. Um, so one of the things that I try to pride myself in, in, in te since you've taken my comics classes, yeah. is that I try not to be a phony in the classroom. I try to like say like, no, this is I'm as excited about this stuff as you are, maybe even more excited about this stuff than you are, and I'm not going to dumb down what I say because your children, after all, and your empty little heads just can't handle my vast intelligence. Who are you calling empty-headed? <laughs> I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically. I don't do that. Okay. I, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I like to think that I come across as, an, as authentic in the you classroom. Um, so let's talk about phonies, because we were kind of going there a little bit. Yeah. We're talking about kids. Let's talk about phonies and authentic people. Uh, Greg, How can you, you tell? How yeah. can you tell when a grown-up is, uh, is faking it? Yeah. Well, a grown-up is usually faking it <laughs> when they always have a smile plastered to their face. Not like an authentic smile, but <laughs> like, hello, how are you today? Are you doing good? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> kind of like Norman Bates or something. I don't know. <laughs> but usually like that, or if you ask too many questions, they'll just be, oh, don't worry, nothing bad will happen. Just sign this waiver. <laughs> That's usually not a good sign. <laughs> I'd say at least. Okay, I'm, let's say let's I'm, say it's it's a it's a holiday, and you're seeing a bunch of uh, uncles and older cousins and things like that. Are there are there things that they say you're like, oh, this this old thing again? Or are there certain uncles or cousins or aunts or whatever that you're like, this is the cool one? What makes the cool one the cool one? Usually, way, somebody who like shares your interests, or a person who's willing to talk to you, who isn't just like um wrapped up in whatever they're doing because it's okay to get wrapped up in whatever you're doing as long as you pay as little attention to that as possible and talk to somebody else instead. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. So but, if somebody um, says, how's school? Which is probably the standard question that you you'll be asked until you're 18. Uh, and then that'll yeah. change to, how's college? <laughs> if you go to college. That's <laughs> usually, it sounds like they're trying to make a conversation, but really they're just trying to Fill in the empty spaces. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, reassuring you that everything's going to be okay even though you know not everything's going to be okay? Yeah, or s people who just, um, like, they act all happy when everybody else is around, but when you're alone by yourself, they're just, like, on their phone or just not paying attention to anybody else in the room. Interested in you as a person? Yeah, not yeah. just, like, um, j just if they actually take any interest in you at all genuine interest you can usually tell um then that means that they actually aren't they're not a phony they're an authentic person can you can you spot that in some of the uh pop culture characters that you enjoy like for, for instance you're a big fan, fan of weird al yankovic yeah as am i uh and one of the things i love about him is that i feel like he's not trying to be really mean to anybody or put himself out front he's not trying to say like look how cool i am because i don't like that Right. He's just saying, isn't that funny that that yeah. thing is weird like that, right? Right. Um, can you spot that in, in creative people as well? Like the difference between somebody who's being authentic in their work and somebody who's not being authentic in their work? Yeah, usually um, somebody, if you can tell by somebody's work, um, if, if it's authentic, it'll usually be something that's very, in, that, that has like something very realistic going on. Not like... I don't. I don't mean to offend you because of pics, but that's. that's I'm not actually, offended. Okay, because actually, yours, they talk like real people. It's not just like where it's like, "Hello, Bob. How did? You, what did you do today? I went to school, Jim. How are you? I am good, Bob." Because nobody wants to read a comic like that, um, unless you do. Then you want to read that comic, I guess. I <laughs> That's what we call a qualifier. <laughs> but oh, wait, what if I wrote a, what if I wrote a comic where um, okay, I'm gonna do a new Boulder and Fleet comic about my bear and bird. Okay. And then the bear comes in. He's like, "Hey, how's it going, Fleet?" He's like, "It's rad. I think that cool things like video games are the best." And he's that's, like, "I like that's video fake." How? Um, because <laughs> you're obviously trying too hard to sound like a modern kid. The problem is most people's impression of a modern kid is what's called a 90s kid, which is essentially 2004 kid. <laughs> Explain the difference between 90s kid and 2004 kid. I gotta hear this. Um, well, 90s kids are kids who are just, well, they're not kids anymore. They're, they're teenagers or they're in their 20s. Yeah. And 2004 kids 
are kids who are obsessed with anything from the 90s, but they're just kind of trying to ride the, the wave, I guess, you know. Mo the nostalgia thing. Yeah, trying to be hip. So I was listening to an interview with Carl Reiner, and he was talking about the Dick Van Dyke show. And one of the things he said that made the show timeless is that they, did not use, they didn't use any slang of the time. So I'm curious, though, because now you can use old slang, and because we're so in the, in the modern day, it kind of works. So, for example, Connor and Jersey, if yeah. a character were to use any of the three following words, which would be the better slash more authentic choice? Yeah. If they're describing a day that has been crazy. This day has been crazy. This day has been trippy. This day has been whack. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Without question. This okay. day has been whack. <laughs> this day's been whack, dog. <laughs> Am I cool yet? <laughs> and Trippy is usually just like, hey man. This day's been trippy. So those dog. those those words are associated with times and pop culture movements. Is that is that what you're driving at, Greg? I'm just I I'm I think some have more uh, baggage on them. I think whack has more baggage on it yeah. than trippy does. I think trippy were far enough away from trippy that it it doesn't have the the stigma of that doesn't belong. Well, but Connor went into a pantomime of a hippie when he, he said that. Yeah, he sure man. did. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, don't... like, what were you gonna say, Connor? Um, I I was just going to say that. Well, peop I'm not even sure if people trying to sound hippie use trippy, but all I know is I consider myself a bit of a hippie. I have never heard anybody use that word. Hippie? Un trippy. Oh, trippy. Unless they are a stereotypical cartoon character or TV show actor who obviously is on drugs. I don't think you want to be on drugs. Say no to drugs. <laughs> that's, 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 that's good. That's by Nancy Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know, uh, but so so, it should be it should be language that people use in, in everyday conversation that feels yeah. more authentic to you. Mm -hmm. um, but you, how do we know what people use in conversation though? Like, well, we're, you, we're cartoonists; we don't get out, we don't get to talk to people. All right, here's what you do, okay? Uh, right. You go on an internet site called Omegle. And go until you find a normal person, then talk to them, <laughs> then copy and paste that whole thing and put it in your copy. Oh you my got God. a bestseller. Okay, kids watching, don't go to Omega. Please don't. <laughs> what is that? It's some weird website. It's 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 a website that, that where you can ask people random questions face to face, kinda like um oh, what was that one called? That that video chat roulette. Chat, chat roulette? Yeah. Yes. That creep show? Yes, yes. I've never been on there, and I'm scared. No, you don't no, want to go there. I've never been on there either, and uh, I am not going to. <laughs> but yes, o Omegle is, is a way to ask random people questions uh, about things. It's less famous for people ha having accurate conversations. It's more famous for people either asking stuff about fandoms, which can be good if you're in that fandom, mm -hmm. or stuff that you usually find posted in the annals of Tumblr or iFunny, like people who just think, yo, this is such a weird conversation, laugh at it. Because, I mean, that, that, that's not how you normally would talk to a person. Yeah? yeah? You don't do that? You don't go to school and be like, OMG? This OMG! Is... Well, <laughs> those are usually Valley Girls. There are a lot of those, but, I mean, it, I don't go to school like, OMG, look at this post! Like, subscribe, and re-vlog! <laughs> But, Yo. Okay, wait, th th that's actually another thing. Like, th this is, God's is turning into just old men asking young people what they do nowadays. But <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been told on certain projects that, like, hey, can you put texting language in the dialogue? Because that's how kids talk nowadays. Do kids talk in texting abbreviations? BRB. No, usually the closest thing is OMG. Yeah. But I mean, um, I've heard some. I, I know that some people will like try to pronounce the ones like lol or um, <laughs> I think, but I mean, I've never they, heard actually, they actually will go lol. I mean, somebody's, I've never heard somebody say rolling on the floor laughing like raffle, am I right? <laughs> or like, um, friz. <laughs> Oh, well, we got to get the book recommendations in a minute or two here. Uh, Greg, I didn't... Well, I was I was going to see if, if Connor had any questions for us. Yes, yes. Do you have any... I, I, I primed you and said, like, you should have some questions ready for Greg. Yeah, I so, have a few. Okay, please. Okay. 
Can I have your autograph? Sure. Can I be in your book? <laughs> the book's already done. No, <laughs> make a new book. And I have one request. Can you okay. replace Fix with a character named The Amazing Connor <laughs> and have, instead of being a teenage fairy princess, a manly, attractive, smart, genius child <laughs> whose name is Connor... Who is me? Uh, no, or something. <laughs> and is me. Please. And what, is, what does he do in the comic? Things. That That's are... vague. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've Activities. been through storytelling class together. Come on. All right. Um, Step up. Is you, he you've a friend? Taken... Is he a foe? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just a person who is average and is weird and no, not weird in any way at all. I, I don't know. This is kind of like talking to a genie. You have to make it incredibly specific or they'll do something weird. Like, That's hey, right. I, I wish frog. to jump high, and then they turn you into a frog. Yeah. That's right. That's true. Don't so. turn there me into a, a frog. There is a frog in Pix. There is a frog in Pix. Oh, God. Don't make me the frog. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Pix There's a too. frog. The frog has a name. What's the frog's name, please? Is it Connor? Lorne. Okay, Lorne. good. Yeah. Don't change his name. It's, please the keep... Book is, in print, there's nothing I can do. It is Just done. don't take a Sharpie or anything to all the copies. Please don't go through that effort to impress me. <laughs> because I know I that I am special. <laughs> all right. Just kidding. <laughs> Was there any other questions you had about picks? Because we, we should say, this, this yeah. book is being released at... What, what is it? I'm, I'm debuting it at Baltimore Comic Con, which is a week and a half from now. And then... I'm working on putting the, the web store together so I could sell copies and all that. That hopefully will happen by mid-September, okay. figuring out some of the mechanics of all that. And I will, I will say that this is... Uh, I had Chris Jerusa on the show a while back, and I said something about how... One of the things I love about G-Man... You've read G-Man, right? Um, I, like Chris Jerusa. I think so. Yeah, it's the, but the kid with the cape that allows him to fly, and then his brother took a piece of the fabric and used it as a belt so he can fly. I, I don't think I've read that, but it sounds good. <laughs> It's it's well it, worth reading. It is. It is. It it, it was uh, one of Kids Comics Revolution Award. Uh, sure but did. one of the things I I said to him on the show was like it, it's to call it a kids book is misleading because it's just a really really good superhero book. Because as an adult I read it, and granted I love kids stuff a lot, but I mean as an adult I read it. I'm like this is like this is like Back to the Future. It's the kind of thing where I can enjoy it this way as a kid. I can enjoy it this way as an yeah. adult. So good. Um, I I do have one serious question for yes. you. Um, what what I noticed about Pix was at first glance it said like um superhero fairy princess and at first that didn't seem as interesting to me but then when I read it it's she's actually a really strong character and I I really liked it did you have any certain inspiration for where you got Pix from uh yeah there was a character at Marvel Comics called Ultra Girl back in the 90s and it was a very cool character that was somebody that I was trying to revive in some capacity when I was working at Marvel. And people just were not interested in doing that. So my friend Brian Smith, who's a cartoonist, said, why don't you just make this your own thing? And I, I went back to the drawing board and made significant changes. And, and that sort of the inspiration for it. That and I love the book Alice in Wonderland. It's one of my favorites. That's a great book. And I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer for a good while, so this is sort of a, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Alice in Wonderland kind of a thing. Oh. So it's it's adventures, but it's it's not it's weird stuff happens. I like weird stuff. Same I like here. things that are just like what, uh, you know. One of the earlier drawings I ever did was was of a tiny, a tiny gal fighting a tentacled eight ball, <laughs> and and I finally got to to do that in this book. Oh my that was gosh. that was something I wanted to do with Ultra Girl. Never. Again, nobody was buying that story, so yeah. I did it my way. <laughs> well, weird. Thank is, you, Sinatra. Weird is really, really good. Um, there are some comics that'll start off with like a kid is standing in his bedroom, and then it's it's like the alternate version of the girl's grandfather kissed a skull in front of a volcano, and there's also a dragon. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, probably. No. I, okay, it's a web comic. Just look up MS. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, you're, yes. you're talking about MSPaintAdventures.com. Yes. You're talking about Homestuck. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Let again. me tell you about Homestuck, Greg. <laughs> oh, boy. You will have to do a whole discussion on Homestuck sometime. Well, all we got was I explained to him it's about people in fedoras. He still believes yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I fedoras mean, yes, scars. it's true. It's true. <laughs> Apparently, it's fedoras and scarves. Everybody's a hipster in Homestuck. 
stuck. Or homestuck. Stuck, yes. You Good just job. committed the old guy error, Greg. <laughs> you mispronounced the thing the kids like. That's the worst. Although, hold on. I'm going to say that was a sincere mispronunciation as opposed to yeah. purposely mispronouncing it to be like, I'm not that into it. Yeah. The internet. Yeah. The internet. <laughs> you kids like the Draculas. <laughs> yeah. What are kids into these days? Communism skeletons? <laughs> Poop? <laughs> At least that's that's my impression of that. But where I was going with my whole talk about uh, Chris Russo, who always deserves a plug, uh, uh, everybody should be G Man, is that I would say the same thing of Pix. Is Pix is just a really well made superhero comic, and I think anybody who's a fan of like real classic superhero storytelling where there's awesome image to text density on the page which is like a weird thing to point out and and like i said when i was talking with chris like he raised an eyebrow when i said that but that's part of the mechanics of the superhero story right i think it's it's a lot of the mechanics of a, a classic comic book story superhero yeah. or not i mean an archie comic is pretty that's true uh, nutrient dense as well and that's another sort of inspiration in terms of, of how I approached picks was to to keep it in that keep the bar at, a, at an archy level of extremeness <laughs> in terms of, of where things were going. Yeah. And that that was actually the way I kept it in check in terms of like this is for an audience, a specific audience. And you know, the, the lovey dovey stuff only goes so far and the fighting only goes so far and you you know yeah. should own personal comics code. Uh, which isn't to say that it's not intense and there isn't danger and all that stuff, but you know it's it's treated. And this again goes to: is it talking down to kids or not? I don't think I was. I think I was being responsible in terms of what you show, what you don't show, and and trying to make it as available to as many people as possible. Uh, the, the the this is something I've talked about on the show before, and so I'm repeating myself, but the show's always new to somebody. Um, but like the rule of thumb for me on this thing, and I think it goes back to what you guys were talking about with Back to the Future. Yeah. Is I was once asked by a guy who was working on the Sugary Cereals anthology. He's like, "Oh, I want to show a dog bite a kid in my story. Like, what do you think? Does, the, should, can that make it in or no?" And I said, "Well, it's one thing if we know the kid is bitten. Like, if you show it off panel and we know the kid is bitten." then that's frightening. But if we see the teeth piercing skin and we see blood dripping down that arm, that's horror. And the trick is, is that <clears throat> you can get pretty dark. Let's go to Weird Al Yankovic for a second. Yeah. Um, uh, Weird Al Yankovic, you know the song, um, When I Was Your Age? Yeah, I, I love that song, but it's, it's just funny because, um, well, off, often I bring like a Weird Al album in the car if my mom ever has to go anywhere. Yeah. And, It'll be funny because she's usually not paying attention, but she'll hear like a random line and she'll start bursting out in laughter. Um, <laughs> have you heard his new album? I have not yet. Is okay. it good? Yes. I'm just going to let you know that there's one moment in the last song called the Jackson Park Express mm -hmm. that um, it was kind of funny because we weren't really paying attention to the song. And they had a joke and my mom started laughing like crazy and it was just like out of nowhere. But that, yeah. That's the great thing about his songs, right? It's like he can catch you off guard. It's going back to that surprise thing. But I want to talk about one of the things about Weird Al that's really fascinating to me is he has a lot of songs that are very dark. Christmas at Ground Zero. That's just what I was thinking. Of. Yeah. I mean, like, it's this really happy Christmas jingle, but it's all about the end of the world, right? Yay! <laughs> but but in when I was your age, I think is the best example of him, how he navigates going dark but never too dark, is that the song is basically, for those who haven't heard it, it's, it's the, the Depression-era grandparent telling you how hard their life was and how easy you got it now. I walked uphill to school and through the snow barefoot both ways yeah. kind of thing. But he takes it, of course, he's weird out, so he has to like elevate it to like this more absurdist level. And so in one of the final refrains of the, or the pieces of the song, he, he says, Dad would whip us every night until a quarter after 12, and then he'd get too tired, tired. and he'd make us we whip ourselves. <laughs> and then that's pretty dark, right? Yeah, it's, about, it's about child abuse. Right. But then the next line is... And then he chopped me into pieces. Don't say the next line. Because he, he chopped me into pieces. I'm like, what are we in an episode of Dexter now? This is crazy. He's like, get, he's murdering his children and played Frisbee with my brain. And let me tell you, Junior, you never heard me complain. <laughs> so like he, he does, it goes super dark, but then he quickly flips it, right? He flips it into something really silly. He played Frisbee with my brain, right? Yeah, I, I don't know why he would do that. Because think, <laughs> think about it. Let's talk boring physics here. The brain is kind of round or something. I don't really know much about brains. I don't seem to have one. But I mean, if you try to throw it, that'd just be like, I, I, I don't know, throwing like a tissue box. That, this is a it's not very aerodynamic. 
Yeah, this yeah. is a horrible frisbee. So is a brain. And it has a consistency of tofu, so it would, just, it would only be good for one throw. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know if I said anything there. It's just this uh, this idea of like you can go dark, right? And then I think I think we've proven today that young people, at least intelligent, hardworking young people, yes. will pick up on what we're trying to achieve there, right, Greg? Well, I mean, it's a big argument all the time. Is is you know the the softening of everything in modern entertainment when you look back at your Disney classics those all go dark super dark at, at every turn there's always something that's super dark what's or, scarier than the transformation scene in Pinocchio when Lampwick starts oh my god well, <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna go to my go-to and say the Wicked Witch of the West but right. either way these things are, are yeah. frightening and dark yeah. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has some dark stuff in it <laughs> yeah you know it's, the work of Shel Silverstein gets dark we can and go on forever with this. Um, I'm sorry. Willy, no, Wonka don't is, Willy Wonka is darker than you know. Have you heard about the fan theory about it? Uh, you know, it you let's hear it. it. Let's hear it, Connor. Okay, the theory is that this, there are multiple variations, but basically that Willy Wonka is a serial killer and mm. that all the kids are the victims. <laughs> it was just noticed last year. Mainly, you remember the scene where Augustus gets shoved into the water, right? Of course I do. Save some room for later. Now, <laughs> what, you got, what you have to know... Notice is the ferry boat scene is right after that. There are no extra seats on board. Like, every seat is taken. That means there were no seats planned for Augustus or his mother, <laughs> which is pretty strange. But, like, later on, after they lose some more kids to this weird Gene Wilder thingy, they have, like, the weird vehicle that gets cleaned by all those bubbles. And they, notice, there are no extra seats, even though they've, like, lost two kids. So How? he he intended to to bump them all off. Yeah, and as well as the scene with the burping and um like when they had that they drank that soda that made you mm -hmm. fly and they almost get chopped up. Fizzy, yeah, it's called fizzy lifting drink. Yeah, it's called fizzy, fizzy lifting, lifting drink. drink. Thank you. But <laughs> it's just like he if he didn't burp then he wouldn't be around for the end of the story. <laughs> and Well, I have a I have a counter argument to this entire theory. Oh, gosh, we're arguing about a movie that's like 40 years old. Anyways, you're saying? The entire point is he's trying to get down to the one person he can give the factory to. Right, but this is a so fan So each one of those new true. things was essentially a test, and he had to narrow it down. And he does say at the end that everybody's fine. Right. They showed that in the 2005 version, like everybody coming out. It was kind of No, weird. no, but in the, in the 1970s version... Uh, Willie explains that everybody's fine because Charlie asks yeah. about them. That's true. And he says that they're all fine. But this, we, this but we have to take his word for it. We don't actually see the kids again. <gasps> true. This is we just don't. a theory. I don't believe it, but <laughs> it's darker than you know. Basically, he's a killer. You're next. Sweet dreams. No pun intended. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Uh, all right. Well, we got we got to wrap with uh, in, a, in a few minutes here, and I wanted to get in some book recommendations. Greg, did you have time to pick any uh, books that you would recommend people read besides Picks One Weirdest Weekend, which we can pick up at the Baltimore Comic Con, or at PicksComic.com when it's available? Uh, let me think. Let me think. The last thing I read was This One Summer, which has beautiful artwork. So I'd say, even if you don't want to read it, the artwork is awesome. I okay after ALA, I, I met Nathan Hale at ALA. Yeah, and he's great. And I read the first. I think it was the first book, One Dead Spy. Mm. That's great. Connor, have you read those, the Nathan Hale books? No, but I I think I've read a bit of one of those. I I've heard of Nathan Hale. Hazardous as a, as a history buff, oh, I yeah, would I've, say I've, you should check those I've books seen out. This. I I've, I I want to check those out. Yeah. Yeah. Those are that first one was really good, super dense, uh, in terms of content and funny genuinely funny banter and and history it's kind of like a i love the show drunk history on comedy central so i feel like the nathan hale books are like entry level drunk history yeah kids uh, should read them they're so great nathan hale's hazardous tales series also yes. a nominee for the case uh kids Counter revolution awards uh last couple years uh, this just hit stands uh, just what yesterday at the time of this recording sisters yeah Barry that book needs more promotion you know, hashtag sarcasm. Hashtag sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I'm gonna. You know what that that sounds? It sounds like a sad cat when you do that. Like like when my cat is like lo lonesome, it'll be lol. That's the, it doesn't sound like lol. laughter. It doesn't sound like happiness. But you know, it it probably lots of kids know who Raina is. But I'm just saying for adults too, and for people who are uh, uh, who enjoy good comics craftsmanship. 
if you haven't checked this out because like, oh, that's a book for little kids. Uh, 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 uh. It's, it's a book for humans. And Raina really knows how to capture human experience. And one of the things I'll say about this book is it, it doesn't, it, I don't want to spoil anything, but it doesn't have a tidy loop on itself, but it has a wonderful, quiet, sneaky closure to it that if you're watching for it, it's so satisfying. I just have one thing to say. Yes. So you said it's a book for humans. Yes. Not little kids. Are you <laughs> insinuating that little kids are aliens sent from the Illuminati homestuck something? Let Troll. the government know! They're coming to take me away! Ha ha! You're only proving your points. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the word. But yes, you know, it's just uh, all comics. Everybody who reads comics should be reading this book, I think. Um, but Your yes, copies on its way. It's in the mail. And I I enjoyed the living heck out of it. It's so good. Uh, I also want to plug one of my own books since we plugged Greg's book. Uh, yeah, this comes please. out. This comes out in uh, two weeks at the time of this recording. The Warren Commission reported graphic investigation into the Kennedy assassination. It's about the Kennedy assassination. Do you remember that we had a president named? Uh, I, I know Kennedy? all about the, the Kennedy assassination. He's actually my favorite president. So. Oh, okay. So here was my. I'm going to ask a favor, Connor. Yes. Um, knowing nothing about this book except that it's about the Kennedy assassination and that I worked on it with Dan Mishkin and Ernie Cologne. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could do your Billy May style commercial endorsement for my book, even though you haven't read it. Okay, I'll try. (laughs) Are you tired of having a normal life? Are you ready for something that's actually good? Hi, Billy May's here with the all new The Warren Commission Report, an uplifting book about the murder of one of America's presidents. It sounds like a great book. I've never read it. What do you say, Jersey? He says he loves it. It's going to be a great book for little kids. It teaches you that life is fragile and short. Buy it. (laughs) So how's that, Jersey? Oh my God! Thank you, Connor. You're welcome. Uh, I think you should rent yourself out as a as a celebrity spokesperson for everybody's product. That was the real Billy Mays. That wasn't me doing a lame voice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Billy Mays, another past celebrity. <laughs> That's he, true. He's still alive, like Elvis. Uh, oh, okay. really? Yeah, he has uh, to be alive. Connor, do you recommend anything? Yes. Um, the only book I really recommend is the only book I can really think of is a book that. You had the author on your show. I, I saw part of that video. Hmm. Meanwhile, I think Jason Shiga. Oh, Jason Shiga. Shiga. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I remember I've um, read it multiple times. And the one, one thing I noticed was that in the book, there are a bunch of endings that, like, if you're just flipping kids, like, he really knows human psychology because I noticed there were some pages that you couldn't get to, like yeah. some parts that it were impossible to get to because of pipes in there. Uh-huh. And it was just funny because these are all endings that the kids have probably already read and they're trying to trace backwards. Yeah. And it's just funny because you can't trace backwards. And m- most of the story, it, most of it for me was just I was trying to find new pages and it was all, re- always really fun. For those who haven't seen it, Meanwhile is a comic that is a choose-your-own-path comic, but it's told with different colored pipes between the panels, and you follow yeah. the pipes between pages, and they're all in different tabs. So you're like going from like page 1 to page 25 to page 72, and so on. And there's, I don't I remember how many thousands of combinations of story are in that there book. There are like 3,000, I think, but I want to warn you one thing if you read that book. Yeah. First of all, don't choose vanilla. Vanilla is a terrible color for boring people. <laughs> Unfortunately, I like vanilla, so what does that say of me? Anyways, whatever you do, if you do you like if you like repeating stories, if because you might make a mistake cuz you're a human. Everybody makes mistakes. You might end up doing the same time machine thing over and over and over which is pretty unlikely. Just don't do the time machine over and over and over. You'll get that when you read the book, Greg. That doesn't make any sense to you, probably, but it will. It made 100% sense. Okay, good, good. Are you lying? Everything you say makes perfect sense. (laughs) Right. All right, so Meanwhile by Jason Shiga. And we do got to wrap. So I have one more thing that I got to put on here, Um, events coming up. First of all, Next episode, follow my blog, comicsgreat.com. I'm going to be doing a bunch of signings for the Warren Commission Report. Go see Greg at the Baltimore Comic Con. Uh, he's a great guy to talk to. Stuffsaidshow.com is a podcast everybody should subscribe to. I plug it all the time in the show. Why? Because I mean it. Because it's really good. Latest Thanks. episode Latest episode just dropped with uh, a, a discussion called Comics Aren't Real with Eric Larson, Kazuki Buishi. Uh, who else was on it? Rob Guillory and Klaus Jansen. Klaus Jansen. Oh, my gosh. What a... What a 
Oh my yeah. god! I mean, that's yeah. like that's like the amalgam universe right there, like merging all those different worlds of comics. That lineup Aww. was the best. That was a great lineup, and so much intelligent discussion dropped in under fifty minutes. That was like that was like taking a stuff set episode and distilling it down to like the Kool Aid juice. You know, yeah, it was it was a good one. It was intense. It was. It was so good. So everybody should go listen to that right now. I mean, stop listening to this. Listen to that right now. Available now for three ninety nine only on the <laughs> App Store. Ba-da-ba-ba. Actually, actually, it's Greg's free. trying to raise, it's free, but Greg's trying to raise three million dollars. Literally, That's true. Okay, trying it's to raise three million. Very simple. Dollars. Then you just need to pay three million dollars because this is the best thing on earth. <laughs> It'll make you young forever. It will <laughs> never give you young it will forever. make you immune to spoilers in all of your books and that is something everybody needs. It will pay all your bills on time <laughs> and it gives you free food. <laughs> Well, you guys are all making much bigger promises than I made. I just said that if I get $3 million, I'll do more than one episode a month. Dude, <laughs> give him $3 million right now. This man deserves it. I mean, he's just awesome. Seriously, I'm not trying to make fun of you. No, Greg is hey, pretty thanks. great. Uh, so the other event that I want to point people at is this September 17th. When is today? September 17th, 2014. 6 to 8 p.m. at the Mallets Creek branch of the Ann Arbor District Library. We're launching a new event. It's going to be a monthly event called the Web Comics Lab. And what this is, is it, the library is lending us out space for local cartoonists, both professional and uh, young or aspiring, to come together and just make comics in the studio space. And then comics that are made there are going to be published, if you decide to include them, published on the Ann Arbor District Library's upcoming web comics site. They're going to have a, a, a web comic site for local cartoonists, cool. co comics made by local people. And they're also going to be rolling out um, their new we uh, comics collection, uh, comics tools collection. So those who've listened to a lot of the shows know that the library uh, lends out telescopes, microscopes, music instruments. You can actually borrow music instruments wow. from the library. Yeah. And now they're putting together comics kits with like things that would be of assistance to a web comics artist that you're going to be able to wow. check out from the library. That collection is going to be in uh, part of this event. And then down the road, the, if, if you stick around and do this thing uh, you know, for the subsequent months and keep showing up to, ch to check-ins and drawing comics there, um, it'll, you know, cartoonists who stand out will be you know, asked to be on this show, and we're talking even about printing up the works of some of the cartoonists in an anthology. Awesome. It's pretty sweet. It's going to be a really neat thing. I've, I've wanted to do this thing for seven years, and I'm so glad we're finally getting wow. to launch it. So that's uh, at uh, the Ann Arbor District Library website, September 17th. September 20, 17th, 2014 at the Mallets Creek branch. I hope I see you there, Connor. I, I hope I can make it. I, I really want to do this. If you don't have dance class. I don't have dance class. Ever. Oh, good. Then you can make it. Hooray. Uh, what kind of dance? Um, Non-existent. <laughs> no, but you do take okay. improv classes. Yes. See? That's right. So, well-rounded guy. Connor, thank, thank you. you for You're making welcome. time to be here today. Thanks it for was... letting me be on here. Uh, I hope we can do it again. I yeah, really I do. Yeah, I hope so. I had a great time. And Greg, thank you again for making time. Uh, everybody should go pixcomic.com. Go there twice, order a copy for you and a friend. You won't be sorry. So, thank you, Jersey. Your advocacy is always uh, <laughs> awesome and appreciated. It comes from the bottom of my heart. I actually, I, I really love I the believe book. it. Uh, but okay, well, this show will be archived at comicsaregreat.com slash CAG101. Thank you to the Ann Arbor District Library for letting Thanks. me do this show. Thanks to Matt Dubay and Eric Kloster in the control room for, you know, putting all the, the live stuff together and capturing all the links in the feed and then, you know, editing all the stuff together. Thank you guys for downloading and listening. And until next time, I've been Jersey Droz of comicsaregreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>